What you are about to see is a universal geometrical process that the laws of physics and mathematics are based upon. This interactive geometry even forms the potential for the symmetry of life. So, what are some properties of a parabola? The parabola contains an axis of symmetry where it is symmetrical and a vertex where there is a minimum or maximum point. And also, it may contain one, two, or no roots at all. For example, over here, we see this water fountain. And the stream of water is a parabola. Over here we have the x-axis. And then, as it curves up, there is the axis of symmetry, or the maximum point. And finally, it starts curving down and intercepts the x-axis one more time. Another phenomenon in this world about par this parabola we're talking about is the way you shoot a basketball and how it goes into the net. So, as a demonstration, we'll have this basketball player over here shoot the ball once to show you that part. As you could see, the way the ball went into the net was like a curve. So just like how we were talking about how a parabola is a curve. And you could draw an axis of symmetry through, through in between. So because the parabola is symmetrical, and the way the ball went in was also symmetrical. So, and there's a maximum value where before the ball drops back down into the net for a good shot. Hello there another phenomenon for you guys that represents a parabola and this parabola is the way you throw a baseball but if I threw it it go up into an arc just like how we talked about with the basketball and I'll demonstrate for you did you guys see that that went up to the maximum value that went up and it goes back down just like a parabola Kepler believed that the underlying structure of the universe was built from perfect geometrical forms. But when he observed the motion of the planets, he found that they moved in elliptical orbits, with speeds that vary relative to the distance from the sun. The closer the planet is to the sun, the faster it moves, as we can see in the top part of this diagram. In a new theory, this is because of time dilation formed by the Sun. If the planet's orbits were circular, there would be no variation in speed and we would have perfect symmetry in movement, space and time, as can be seen in the lower part of this diagram. This is because the time dilation formed by the Sun is spherical, therefore a planet in circular orbit will not encounter a gravitational difference that is formed by time dilation. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the greatest time dilation or the slowest rate that time flows. Therefore gravity is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force because time is being formed photon by photon. I believe this can be seen in the mathematics with both gravitational force and the electromagnetic force having the inverse square law. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. There is no mysterious action at a distance. The gravitational field will work at the speed of light because it is an integral part of one universal process with the electromagnetic force. Where some theories see disunity, disharmony and chaos, this theory sees oneness, unity and harmonics that can only be formed by one universal process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. This organization is formed by the quantum wave particle function or probability function having spherical symmetry Nothing has greater organization or lower entropy than a sphere. Light photon energy from the sun cascades down, forming greater degrees of freedom, 
for increasing entropy or disorganization that we have in the second law of thermodynamics. This process of symmetry forming and breaking also forms the possibility for the formation of more complex and diverse forms of symmetry that we see as the imperfect symmetry of cell life. Intelligent life forms can even set up their own symmetry as in billiards, snooker or even chess and then break the symmetry seeing the uncertainty of the game unfold as the future comes into existence photon by photon. Each player has their own timeline and will see and feel time as only having two dimensions with a future and a past. But in reality each player is creating their own three-dimensional space-time by interacting with the wave-particle duality of light from the center of their own reference frame. When the spherical symmetry is broken it forms the imperfect spiral symmetry of life that is visible in nature. This is because if the quantum wave particle function or probability function is reformulated as a linear vector then all the information I can find says that each new vector is formed by adding the two previous vectors together. This forms the Fibonacci sequence. In this theory we have the Fibonacci numbers in nature not because of economy of growth or space but because time and space is being formed by the geometry and therefore the mathematics of this dynamic process. As can be seen on the diagram we already have zero representing the moment of now time equals zero with positive one and minus one representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. Therefore we even have the start of the Fibonacci sequence in the diagram. This is linked to Euler's identity giving this beautiful equation a place in the structure of space and time. This theory explains a greater reality of one creative principle behind the laws of physics forming something like a sounding board of a musical instrument that resonates with the vibrations of one's own thoughts, efforts and actions. In this theory mass is a byproduct of time dilation. When time slows down it takes more effort to move an object from A to B and this is seen as an increase in mass. Also Einstein's equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration falls out of this theory. Because energy and momentum have to increase for an object to accelerate, time dilation will increase relative to the acceleration. Therefore we have the equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration. This will be felt as inertia in the direction of the acceleration. Therefore we have Isaac Newton's first law of motion. Unless acted upon by a net unbalanced force an object will maintain a constant velocity. This theory takes the dynamic interactive process of the general theory of relativity and extends it to our everyday life explaining a universe that is continuously coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of our own actions. Every individual is a part of this interactive process that forms the uncertainty and probability that is needed for the great game of life. But above all this theory gives us an objective understanding of time as a process of continuous creation. Even a rose blooming will create its own arrow of time within its own reference frame. This fits in with the reality of our everyday life with a past and potential future that we can interact with from the center of our own reference frame, turning the possible into the actual. This can be in the form of art and poetry. Therefore even a dancer on the dance floor will interact with this process, forming their own future space-time relative to their energy and momentum of their own actions. For in this theory creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder with an objective reality 
in the form of a dynamic interactive process that forms an infinity of possibilities. I have tried to make this theory as simple as possible in the belief that everyone should be able to understand it. In my other videos I explain this theory in much greater detail. As an artist I am outside the scientific community, so any help you can give in promoting this theory will be gratefully welcome. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe. It will help the promotion of this theory.